Every printer can be capable of batch printing with some careful tuning and considerations, so you too can be able to create the same part over and over with consistent results. Let's get started. <music> 3D printers have widened the scope of what is able to be manufactured, from high detail one-off 3D designs to small production products. It has made it significantly easier to streamline the prototyping and manufacturing process for hobbyists and industrial designers alike. While 3D printers excel at the highly customized 3D models, they also fill the ever-present niche of a small-scale manufacturing device that can produce the same part with consistent results, all while being able to iterate it on the production line and still being cheaper than going with injection molding. This is called batch printing. Before you even get started, it's important to consider whether or not batch printing is even the right choice for you and your specific 3D models. By batch printing, you minimize downtime for your 3D printers, because if you start a print at 4.30, that's only going to be an hour, then you're going to spend all that time when you're gone away from your printer, or it's just sitting idle. If you do a batch print, you can have a 16 hour print start at 4.30, it's printing out 12 parts, and when you get to the office the following morning, it'll be just finishing up that print, so you can pop them off and start up a seven hour print so that before you leave the office again, you can start up another 16 hour print and just keep the printer constantly moving instead of having any downtime where it's just sitting there waiting for you to do something with it. Most 3D printing slicers have settings for minimum layer time or minimum print speed. And this is done to make sure that every layer at least takes a certain amount of time to give the plastic enough time to actually cool before it moves on to the next one. If you have a really small part, it's likely to activate some of these settings to make sure that it has time to cool down. So if you have a really small part and you're trying to print one, it will slow it down. But if you print three of those same parts, there may be enough time where it doesn't need to activate those settings. So it's potentially possible that you can print three part or one part in the same amount of time. If your printer features some way to use an SD card or USB drive to store all of your G-code, you can use that device to organize all of your G-code based on the print time. And also, if you're using G-code just saved to an SD card and you have all of the same machine, you can just copy and paste that G-code to all of your machines so that they all have the same plating and you don't need to re-slice every single time for every different printer. By minimizing downtime by batch printing, you're also minimizing your pre and post processing that's needed to be done, like applying bed adhesive or waiting for it to heat up or taking off your build plate, flexing it, scraping off your parts, you're only doing that a couple times per day instead of every couple of hours. And by batch printing, you can just set a timer to come look at this every so often instead of having to get up from your desk, come over, do all your adjustments, start the next print and go again. It gives you a lot more time to focus on other work instead of having to monitor your printers all the time. Before you start batch printing, here's some key points you can have on a checklist to make sure that you hit all the marks to be able to start batch printing on your own. Make sure that your 3D printer is well tuned because any sort of retraction, zit, blob, stringing, under extrusion issue that you have is just gonna compound by having multiple parts on the build plate, effectively making one build plate of wasted time. Be sure to check out our top 10 calibration prints video to see what we do when we wanna do any sort of batch printing or to just give any printer a good tune up. Over time, the adhesive properties of your build surface will wear down. So whether you're using an adhesive that you apply to it or it's some sort of adhesive sheet, you wanna make sure that both are nice and refreshed before you start a big batch print. If you're using an actual adhesive that you apply, make sure to wipe off everything you can, whether it's water soluble or you need some sort of chemical like isopropyl alcohol, clean it all off and then reapply it. You don't need to go overboard, just enough in a good cross hatch pattern across your bed surface. If you have some sort of adhesive sheet, Clean it off with a little isopropyl alcohol so you can get rid of any fingerprints or oils from your fingers or any sort of debris from either filament dust or just dust in general to make sure that your 3D printer has the most adhesive qualities that it can. Like I mentioned previously, bed leveling is very important. So make sure you run through any calibration wizard or auto bed leveling sensor to make sure your bed is level. Then you can start with some calibration prints. You can either find a specific bed level calibration print or just do a rectangle, or just start your batch print and see how the first layer goes. Start with the skirt, then look at the parts. See if everything's running smoothly, and if it is, let it ride. If it's not, you can start over instead of committing to an entire wasted batch print. Another thing you can do to minimize the problem of running out of filament is just having some sort of filament sensor. And these come in different forms and not all are created equal, because some just check to make sure that there's filament in the sensor, and others actually check if the filament is moving. This one will see if there's a jam and will usually pause the print so that you don't have a failure. Whereas the other one, if you get a jam, it's just gonna keep moving because there's still filament in the switch. 
and some filament spools actually have the end of the filament taped to the spool. So if it runs out, it's gonna stay taped to it, it's gonna get jammed in either your Bowden tube or your filament sensor, or even sometimes get all the way to your drive gear. So you wanna make sure that you know that your filament manufacturer doesn't tape it before that you actually use it on a batch print in case it runs out, it doesn't cause any problems. Take a look at the slice G code for your batch print and look for any thin parts, anywhere where it might tip over because it doesn't have enough surface area to actually keep it attached to the bed. Whether it's support or just a weird spot in the model that starts out really thin and grows bigger. You basically wanna minimize in any way parts that can fall over. Still here has a very broad, flat base, which makes it easy to stick to the bed. But for something that's a bit more narrow, you may want to add a brim to really attach it. If it's even smaller, you can consider adding a raft, but a brim is usually enough to get the job done. Yes, it will add more time to your post-processing to remove the brim, but to me, that's preferable to just running the risk of one of my parts falling over and ruining the entire batch again. Now, if your printer, you just don't feel like it's capable of batch printing, you don't trust it enough, it's got some weird issue that you don't think makes it good for batch printing, make sure to keep an eye out for any 3D printers that have really large beds, because those tend to be pretty good at batch printing. The CraftBot XL has a really large bed, which makes it perfect for batch printing. And because it's tall, it doesn't limit you for future use. So you're not just limited to doing very short batch prints, you can do tall batch prints or just one really big and tall model. And then of course there's dual extrusion 3D printers that have the nozzles mounted to the same head. Something like the Ultimaker S3, the S5, the Lulzbot Taz Pro, or the Raze Pro 2. Since both nozzles are mounted to the same head, they're effectively single extrusion for any sort of batch printing. But they all feature a really large bed so you can do a lot of printing all at once. There's another setup for dual extrusion that actually works really well for batch printing and that's IDEX. There's the CraftBot Flow IDEX, the CraftBot Flow IDEX XL, there's the Raze E2, BCN3D Sigma, Sigmax, and Epsilon, and then the Maker Gear M3ID and Ultra One. They all feature two separate tool heads with two separate nozzles, so each of them can print independently of the other. Now they are all locked on the x-axis crossbar, which means they have to make the same y movements and the same z movements, since they all rely on the same bed, but they aren't tied on the x-axis, so you can print with both nozzles on the build plate at the same time, effectively giving you two printers in the space of one. Now with these two, you can either do duplication mode, where they are following each other on the build plate, mimicking the same moves, or there's mirror mode. So if you have mirrored parts, like maybe exhaust manifolds you're printing two of, you can have them moving opposite of each other instead of having to print the exact same one twice. Whether you're an engineer in the industry looking to maximize the efficiency of your production line, or your hobby is just looking to get the most printed parts done for all of your projects at once, batch printing is a versatile technique to keep in your back pocket. Is there any tip here that I didn't mention that you find useful for batch printing? Or maybe you just have a question about batch printing in general because you haven't tried it yet? I'd love to hear both in the comments down below. For those of you about to embark on your first batch print, best of luck to you. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching that video on batch printing. I know that it's super satisfying when I'm batch printing to be able to just pull off a build plate and it's covered in perfectly printed parts. So I hope that you try batch printing as well. If you want to read some in-depth articles, be sure to go to matterhackers.com or if you want to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, you click subscribe. See you in the next one.